Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today we are checking out something called CAD Sketcher. This is a brand new add-on for Blender. It uh, basically turns Blender into a 2D CAD system, but on top of that it is fully non-destructive. So that enables you to do some really cool things with your workflow. We're going to go hands-on immediately and I'll show you and then we'll come back and get some of the details here. Just do know you can download the zip from here and that is what you're going to need to get it installed. So here we are in Blender default scene. To install this guy basically just come on in here, download that zip file already, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, install, and then select the zip file you've downloaded. Once it's there, you will get 3D View CAD Sketcher in your list. Click this guy right here. Now there is a catch, uh, and I've already done this, so you're not seeing the UI, but there is the solver module, and it will say you've got the option of uh, specifying one or installing from PIP. This failed on me if I did not do an update to um, the current version of Python. So it's before you run all this, install the newest version of Python and you should be good to go. Uh, and then once you've got that solver installed, it is here and ready to go. Hit the N key to bring up the tools menu and you will now notice there is a Sketcher tab here. Now, obviously this is a Blender video, so we have to sacrifice a default cube by default cube. Okay, it's gone. So now that we've got this one, we're gonna add a new sketch. A sketch is basically a two CAD drawing. So you're going to go add sketch. Now we pick which axis we want to work on. So we'll do this on that plane right there. So now we've got our new sketch and I'm going to, we've got a couple of tools over here in our toolbar. You'll notice some of these can be expanded out with additional options. Uh, this one has 2D or 3D points, 2D, 3D lines. What we're going to do is a simple rectangle like so. So just basically draw out our scene like this. And by the way, you could come in here, grab this tool here and do edits. After the fact, no problems at all. And now that we've got that shape here, I'm gonna actually do some cutouts in it of circles. So there's one and there's one. All right, so very simple sketch. I can see it from above, just a 2D drawing. And now what we're going to do is 3Dify it. Now what you're gonna notice here is in our sketch tool, we have the option here of convert to, and we can convert it to a Bezier curves or a mesh. I'm gonna go ahead with mesh here. And now, and we also got the option fill in the shape, which we want it to do. So basically it's going to make this shape and cut these shapes out of it. So I'm gonna go back here to leave our sketch and then boom, there is immediately our result. So now we can do some funky things in 3D with this guy. So for example, I'm gonna grab this shape here and I'm gonna add a modifier of type solidify on it. So solidify, like boom, uh, we'll put the offset up to one and we will increase the thickness. All right, there you go. So very simple. Uh, you can create these uh, shapes from 2D and work with them in 3D. Now you'll notice here in the Sketcher tab, I have this edit here though. This is where the non-destructive part comes in. So I can come back here at any time. I can grab one of these things. I'll go in the move mode over here and I'll say, all right, you go over here, you go over here and we could do another cutout. So let's do a cutout there. All right, so we've done those edits. We'll leave our sketch and then boom, you notice the immediate results. Pretty cool stuff there. Now, another really interesting thing is you can actually do a sketch on another surface. So what I can do here now with this shape selected, I've got this option down here. I can say add a work plane on a face, on a mesh face. So I go here and I'll pick the face I want it to be. So right there. And now what I can do is just add another sketch and I can use that work plane, and now my sketch will actually show up on this particular surface. So if I go ahead here and do a circle, it's actually going to do it directly on that work face. Really cool stuff, kind of gives you a couple of neat options. Now we're gonna get a little bit into the constraints side of things. So if you're drawing your 2D drawing and you wanna have some precision to it, which is generally something that is important in the land of CAD, let's start over. We're gonna sacrifice our second cube here. So once again, just go ahead and create a new sketch. So here, Sketcher, add sketch, and then we'll do the same axis again, like so. But what I'm gonna do this time, we have the line, we're gonna do a 2D line here. And this is a sequence of lines, by the way. So we could do whatever shape we want, just kind of keep drawing them here. And then you right click to finish or we'll close our surface off like that. So we added this um, shape here. Now we can, this is where the constraints are coming in. So I'm gonna move over here to the selection tool here. And you're gonna notice we've got all these various different options available here. So say we wanna have a constraint between this one and this one. We want them to be parallel to each other at all times. Well, I can go here and say parallel. Oh, I think I need to select one first. So parallel, select. All right, so select parallel. We'll pick the one that has to be parallel like so. And then our solver tool will do all of the magic required to make that happen. At the same time, we can also do it with an angle. So I can say here, this one and this one have to be 
an angle. And we can pick here and we can pick how much that angle needs to be. So if you've got that precision thing going on, you can do these, these fixed constraints in your model uh, at any time you want. So now what you'll see is if I come back here and I'm in the move mode and I grab a control point like this, you notice it's holding and it's making, so it's making sure that that constraint is held. It's making sure that these two lines are always uh, parallel to each other. So this is where the constraint driven part goes. Now I'm not a CAD guy by any means, uh, not an area I work with. So, you know, over here, why you would you use a coincident? I don't know, not my world. But if you're a CAD person, obviously these are going to make sense to you. But even if you're not, you're using this, like say for the topic of this channel is game development. Well, where could this come in handy? This would be good for doing uh, floor plans that you then, you know, extrude out. Uh, again, anything that has some precision to it. And in the future, there is going to be some control in here for beveling and lofting and so on. Uh, but for now, what you're going to have to do is always convert it once again to a mesh, come on out, uh, and then using simple modifiers with your creation, like here, uh, we could go ahead and do um, the solidify on it. Make that big, make that up here. And then we can do it again, constraints. We can add another modifier. We can put the bevel in at this point. So right now, you're going to have to rely on the existing Blender tools to make things like that beveling work. But the cool thing here is once again, completely uh, non-destructive work. So for any time I want, I could come in here. All of these things are going to be preserved. So those angles are going to stay the same. I'm gonna come out here, they were preserved. So if you're doing hard surface modeling and you wanna have an element of precision to it, these constraints will come in very, very handy. And again, the entire workflow is non-destructive. So if you're doing sort of like vertical Boolean type work, again, come back in here and cut it out. So you can see how you could use this to make um, precise mechanical shapes. So if you were using if you're doing mechanical modeling, say you're modeling a foot or out of a mecha or a shoulder or something to that effect, this works in that regard as well. Uh, it's kind of good for building precise parts or components. So that's one way I could definitely see using this guy. So now let's get over to some of the details about it. Again, this was uh, just announced a couple of days ago. Uh, you do need to use Blender 2.92 or later. Again, do keep in mind, if you are using uh, Windows, you're going to want to make sure that you have a decent version of Python installed before you start up Blender. Uh, it is an open source project. Um, so it is under the GPL v3 license, which is the exact same one that Blender is under. Um, on top of that, there's a, a Discord server. You want to go ahead and check it out. They've also got a, a shop page. So if you want to give donations to them, uh, you could do it that way as well. So I will link the Discord, the installation, and all that stuff down below. But mostly what you have to do is just come in here and grab one of the zips. There isn't a release here, so you got to grab the zips from this link right here. This will bring you to the various different zip. Oh, actually, it's just direct download. So bring that down. That is what you install from. The nice thing is on top of that, there is some decent uh, basic instructions on how to go ahead and use this guy. Uh, they're all available right here. Now, do keep in mind, I believe it is using Solve Space. That is the magic uh, thing behind the scenes for, for doing the constraints. Uh, so that... Yeah, so it's integrating the solve space installer. So that is also where you can, if you don't know what the, the constraint terms mean, uh, you can drill down and find about it there. But otherwise, all of the instructions are here. But for the most part, it is actually pretty simple and easy to use. And it turns Blender into a constraint-driven, non-destructive CAD system uh, where you can make some pretty cool stuff pretty easy with some precision involved. Uh, so let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.